Aloha and welcome to our weekly devotional. This morning we'll be in the book of Nehemiah, chapter number 8, verse number 8. The Bible says, So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, which is the Tershatha, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for, for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Let's go, Lord, in prayer to our Heavenly Father. Lord, we love you. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for loving us. Lord, thank you for, for coming into this dirty, rotten, stinking, sinful world, Lord, and making your way up that hill and shedding your blood on the cross of Calvary. Lord, you went through all that suffering. You went through all that pain because you looked beyond the cross and you saw me and you thought I was worth it. Lord, I thank you so much for the salvation that you so freely provided. And Lord, Lord I thank you, Lord, for after that, that you daily load us up with benefits lord and thank you for each and every one of them lord i thank you for my family i thank you lord for my church i thank you lord for the calling you've placed upon my life and lord this morning i ask you to do what i cannot do and that is to speak to the hearts of the people that are tuned in listening to uh this devotional lord i pray lord that you speak to our hearts lord i pray lord that you give us something to carry us down the road lord and to take us through the journey lord and draw us all closer to you lord i ask all this for your honor and your glory in jesus name amen the Bible says here that the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And I don't know about you, but I need strength. I need God's help. I need His strength to be the right kind of father I need to be, to be the right kind of husband I need to be, the right, be the right kind of citizen I need to be, to be the right kind of Christian I need to be. I need God's help. I need His strength. I need His hand upon my life. You know, there's many people that are suffering in this world. There's many Christians that are suffering in this world, especially uh, during this time of this whole COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. There's people who are sick, Christians who are sick. There's Christians who have lost their jobs, Christians who are struggling because of all this. You know, Christians are not exempt from struggles. Christians are not exempt uh, from uh, problems in their life and, and from suffering. Uh, as a matter of fact, God said that the godly shall suffer persecution. That's, that's a promise from God. Uh, this, we're not exempt just because we're, we're a child of God. But the difference is, when this world goes through suffering, and I go through suffering, and I go through the same things that the world goes through, the difference is I go through it with Him. And, and He is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And I, I, I could go to him. He said, I will always be with you. I will never leave you. Lo, I'm always with you, even to the ends of the world. He's always there. And I could go to him at any time and cast all of my care upon him, for he careth for me. What I need in this world is his joy. What I need in this world is his strength. I need his strength to get through life's journey. I need his strength to run my race. I need his strength uh, just to do what he's asked me to do. And here he says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Well, as I was reading this passage, I thought, well, how, how did these people get joy? Well, I think the answer is found in verse number eight. It says, so they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. When uh, Nehemiah got up and read out of the book and then didn't just read it, but he, he gave them the sense. In other words, he, 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 they were able to sense what God was saying here in, in this book, in this passage, what he was reading to them. And he says, and he gave them understanding. Uh, the light came on. They understood what God was saying. And that gave them joy. And the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. I believe when you have an understanding of God's Word, when you get into God's Word, you get into His presence, and you get an understanding of what He wants and what His cause is and what His words say, it gives you a purpose in your life. It gives you a joy in your soul, and it gives you strength uh, to make it through the, the journey. Uh, right in the heart of your Bible, in the book of Psalms, chapter number 16, verse number 11. By the way, if you have a, a King James 16:11, this is what it's going to say in Psalms 16:11. It says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures 
forevermore. Man, what a wonderful verse in the Bible. Right in the heart of, of God's word, he tells us that in his presence, there is fullness of joy. You know, there's a big difference between happiness and joy. Happiness is temporary. Joy is something that will last forever. Uh, uh, remember Paul and Silas. They were thrown into the prison and they were beaten and they ended up singing. I mean, what would, what would cause them to sing when they were beat up and they were thrown in, I mean, if you had any reason to complain, if you had any reason to be sad, it would be in that situation. But they began to sing. Why? Because they had joy in their hearts. Happiness is temporary. Joy is something you can never take away from me. Happiness is, uh, when, when I took my wife out on Valentine's Day, man, that made me happy. I got steak and lobster and she got... Um, salmon and we had good time of fellowship with our friends there and and it was all good and I was happy and then I got the bill and I was sad <laughs> uh, happiness is just temporary but joy is something you can never take away from me man you could take away my health you could take away my wealth you could take away my family but you can never take away the joy of the Lord that's something that's going to last forever uh, you can't take away heaven from me you know, Jesus made an interesting statement in the book of John, chapter number 15. He said that, that he wants his joy to remain in us. His joy to remain in us. Well, I got to thinking about that and I thought about, well, what is his joy? What is God's joy that he wants to remain in us? And I think the answer is found in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 12. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, well, we just had witnessed the faith in chapter 11 of all the heroes of faith. We witnessed their faith. And then he says in chapter 12, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. In other words, just as we witness the faith of the heroes in chapter number 11, now we have a cloud of witnesses that are witnessing our faith. They're looking into our life and seeing if, uh, looking at our faith, is, is our God real in the hard times? Is our God real when you have financial troubles? Is our God real when you have physical troubles? Is our God real when you have family troubles? They're looking to see if our God is real. You may be the only Bible somebody ever is reading. And it says, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, because of this, let us lay aside every, every weight and the sin which so does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So this race, this, this journey that God has put us on, he wants us to run it with patience. And then he says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The only way you're ever going to make it through this life, the only way you're ever going to make it through with what the Lord's called you to do is to keep your eyes on him. Remember Peter, he was on the boat and he jumped off the boat and he began to walk on water. And he had his eyes fixed on the Lord Jesus Christ, but then he began to look at the storms around him. And he began to look at the waves and the wind, and then he began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. And the Lord gave him a second chance and picked him up. But as long as he kept his eyes on the Lord, he was able to walk on water. And man, that's what we need. We need the, our eyes on the Lord so we can walk above our circumstances, walk on water. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Man, it says it was his joy to go to the cross and to suffer in all of that agony and to suffer with all of that shame and to suffer with all that pain. What, what was his joy? Uh, the Bible says in the book of uh, Jeremiah that he set his face like a flint towards Jerusalem. Do you realize everybody in the world tried to stop Jesus from getting to the cross? I mean, the devil tried to stop him. His friends tried to stop him. Peter tried to stop him. I mean, the, the Romans tried to stop him. The Pharisees tried to stop him. But he set his face like a flint to, towards Jerusalem. He, he was determined to get to that cross. And the more opposition that he had, the more determined he was to get to his to cross and lay down his life. Man, what, what, what gave him that motivation? What gave him that strength that he needed to, to, to lay down his life? I mean, it, it wasn't the Romans that killed him. It wasn't the Jews that killed him. The Bible says that he willingly laid down his life. He did it because it says for the joy. What was his joy? Well, you were his joy. I was his joy. 
He got through the cross because he looked beyond the cross and he saw you. And he thought you were worth it. He was willing to go through all of that because he looked on the other side and he's seen you. And he said, man, I'm, I, I need you in heaven. I need to have fellowship with you. I long for you. I want you. I love you. And that's what got him through the cross. And Jesus says he wants his joy to remain in us. What was his joy? His joy was his love for you. And that's what, that's what we need. We need to have a love for him. When we have a love for him and we keep our eyes on the Lord and we keep our knees on the floor and we get into his word and we get an understanding of who he is and what he wants, man, it does something in my heart. It causes me to love him more and it puts a joy in my heart. And that is what our strength is, our love for him. When we get into his presence, the Bible says that when we come into his presence, there is fullness of joy. Man, we're, we're fellowshipping with him. We're, we're, nothing could go wrong in his presence. I don't care if I was dying of cancer. I don't care if I lost everything I had. When I'm in his presence, that's all I need. Because this life, man, it's just a vapor. We're here one minute, we're gone the next. And then eternity begins. And it begins with Him. And, and man, I can't wait to get there. I can't wait to see Him. I can't wait to hear Him. I can't wait to touch Him. I've already got it planned out for the first million years. When I get to heaven, man, I'm just going to grab hold of His ankles and say, Lord, thank you, 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 thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. And I'll, I'll never get tired of thanking Him. I, need, I don't know about you, but I need Him. I need His strength. I need His hand upon my life. And the only way that I'm going to have His strength is I've got to have His joy. And I think of David in Psalm chapter number 51. Uh, he, he messed up, man. He committed adultery. He committed murder. And then he began to repent of his sins. And he said, Lord, cleanse me. Blot out my sins. Wash me from my transgressions. Then may the joy, your joy be restored. Oh, oh, let me read it so I don't misquote it. Psalm chapter 51. He says, he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast not away thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. David said, man, I, I, I'm weak. I need your strength. The only way I'm going to get your strength is by the joy of your salvation. The only way I'm going to get your, the joy of your sa salvation is if I, I'm in your presence. Cast me not from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Lord, I need you. You are my joy. You are my strength. You are my rock. You are my shield. You are my buckler. You are my everything. Man, I need him. I know we all need him. The only way we're going get to him, get him is to get in his presence, to get into his word and find his joy. Only then can the joy of the Lord be our strength. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening us. Lord, I, we, we can't do what you've called us to do in our own strength. We need your strength. Uh, you told us in the book of Ephesians that uh, we've got to have your might. We've got to have your power, and we've got to have your strength. And the only way we're going to do that is to get in your presence. And, Lord, to get into your word and get understanding of you and of what you want, Lord. And I pray that for every single person that's tuned in, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you give them understanding of your word. Lord, that you give them the joy and the strength that we need to accomplish your will and the race that you've set before us, Lord. We ask all this for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.